I need something like some sort of income. Right. And, uh, and then like a month went by and I was kind of like looking and I, I was like, I don't know why, but I looked at the weed farm and I threw out my resume and they called me hmm. and I was like, dang, okay. So, dang. so this weed farm, it's not like a dispensary. It's like an actual no, farm. No, yeah. We just are... grow. Yeah. We just grow a lot of plants that, you know, gets, you know, packaged up and then to dispensaries or turned into a concentrate or process to an edible damn so is it like that very end of uh pineapple express where they go in and they see just that inside of the building with all of the weed plants in there pretty much yeah it's pretty close because like we're a big facility and so like yeah dang it's like when i first started working there it was kind of like you're like wow you know it's a wow factor right right. but then it goes away because it's work you know it it ends up being work you know right right. it's like it's pretty physical so you know it's, I mean, it, it makes sense because everything you got to do work, it just sucks a little bit of the thrill out of it. Like if I'm sure if I was a porn star, sex would probably not be that fun for me. Yeah, it's got to be tough, you know? Yeah, yeah, because you're it's a different performance or something. I don't know. Yeah. What do you do for leisure fun at that point, I guess? Yeah. I mean, your whole view of titties would be different. You just walk yeah. in and like, oh, God, another set oh, of tits. Man. Yeah. Oh, so work t- again you know, or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, shoot. So oh man well hello everybody welcome to another episode of a comedy advice podcast my name is stefan satani your host joining me today very special guest he's a comedian right here in the valley of the sun carl umfres thank you so much uh huge honor man i feel like i almost don't deserve to be here with your you know just esteemed guests that you've had in the oh, comedy community oh you make you me know, blush some, and gush what? yeah i mean that uh, you've had like some legends and a lot of comics i look up to so i mean it's an honor. Thank you for having me. Oh, dude, absolutely. I appreciate it. And I love having, like, I've had some really, really talented comics here in Phoenix, you included. Thank Although you. I haven't had the chance to see you yet, and it's pissed me off because I was going to go to the Sydney Smith show to see yeah. you and, like, two birds with one stone. Him, and then Anthony A. I had Anthony A. on the podcast. Great yeah. guy. Yeah, but, super nice guy. Yeah. So. But, I mean, you and me, we don't go too far back. I think one time maybe we nodded at each other at the Tempe Improv. Did like if, if I mean I worked there for about four years, so if you saw a show from like 2016 to 2020, okay. there was a strong chance we've come across. Okay, okay. So. I think, I think it may have been you, maybe not, but we went to go see Maz Jabrani, my wife and I, and uh, I had him on the pod, and then we ended up going to see him, and then my wife took was like she was about to take a picture, and then before I could be like. Baby, you shouldn't take a picture. Somebody was like, "Excuse me, you can't take a picture." And she was like, <laughs> "Oh," and I thought that was you. And I, 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 it was a great impression because I was like, "Man, courteous but firm, but also like, you know, don't do it, <laughs> or I'll kick you out." And I was like, "This is great." He was, he wasn't mean about it. He was great, and I was like, "He's gonna be on my podcast one day." Awesome. So whether it was that, you or not, <laughs> that's great. I actually, I think that was me. If it was like this year, because I that was one of the shows that they called and asked if I could come in and work for, like kind of out of the blue. So most oh. likely was me. Oh, okay. And, uh, I think it was you. Yeah. I think so it was. That's yeah. the technique I developed because I found that like uh, like being a like a bigger guy with a beard. Yeah. When I would tell people like politely, like, "Hey, please, no pictures or recording. Keep the phone away," they would somehow be insulted by like I was talking down to them or something. So now, you know, then it just came like real short and brief, like, hey, put the phone away, no pictures. Yeah. And for some reason, that sticks and people are like, okay, yeah, I get it. Yeah. Sorry. The delivery was excellent. I, I mean, it was, it was good. And we got Thanks. the message. We didn't put our phones yeah. away and no more pictures. So, <laughs> yeah. um, but it must have been really interesting working at the Tempe Improv and working with so many esteemed comedians and, for sure. and very talented people. And, so it's 2016 you started working there yeah were yeah. you in comedy at the time or were you like i just need a job and no this seems like uh it was my like secret to that i wanted to do stand up and i hadn't told anybody okay. and like my research had led me to you get a job working the door at a comedy club and that's your foot into the the comedy scene mm. you know so like that's what i had knew from listening to like other well-known comics podcasts and stuff like that nice. hearing like that's you know like how a lot of them got their start so i was like okay yep. perfect and then i just happened to see that the tempe improv was hiring for a door guy and i was like shoot threw my resume at it nice. and casey called me up and was like coming for an interview and oh, i interviewed wow. and he offered me the job and uh and he asked at that time if i had any interest in being a comic and i was like no 
you know, because oh. like it's just like a secret I didn't want to tell anybody about. And, yeah. Uh, and he's like, okay, well, you know, you know, you're a greeter here. You're not a door guy, so be polite. You're more of like there for the comedians to ensure that the show goes well. Mm-hmm. You know, the, your priority is the show and the comedian. You know, so always make sure that they're looked out for and that people are, you know, enjoying the show. And the show's not getting disrupted. Wait, so as a greeter, was that the person when you started out? You were at the front greeting people and then Yeah, you greet ID people, and... take IDs, and then when the show starts, you post up in the back of the room and move around and check for cameras and oh, make sure okay. people aren't talking and, you know, disrupting the show in general, like trying to heckle or anything like that. So Was this the first type of job where you had to use people skills and be tough with folks in terms of like, Hey, you're not supposed to do this or I'd manage even kick them out. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I mean, I've been interrupted, but I, like I'd managed uh, some nightclubs and stuff in the past. So like I'd kind of had that experience going into it. So I kind of okay. knew, but it was a obviously different cause I had not worked in like a comedy scene or anything. And what I knew of comedy was watching people's, you know, half hour, or one hour special. Yeah. So you're seeing like the cut polished work. You're not seeing the, you yeah. know what happens behind the scenes or how they got to that that polished hour so Damn. it was a it was a big eye opener working at the club and seeing like how the pros really like developed and set up their their jokes and their sets and everything and uh just a huge like pool of minds to like even ask for like you know little advice but nice. you know, i did a weird thing cuz i wanted i needed some sort of confidence i uh. guess So, like, my goal when I first started working there was to, like, try to get the headliner each weekend to laugh at, like, something. Oh, Like, a comment or, you know, whatever I could do to get the headliner to laugh. Yeah. Because whenever that would happen, they would then respond with, like, oh, do you do stand-up too? And then I'd say no, and they'd be like, give it a try. You know, so, like, I would use that as the confidence, you know, to or a confidence builder. Yeah. To, you know, get up and do it. That's kind of cool. It's almost like a little goal that you set for yourself to be like, okay, I'm proving to myself that I'm funny and it's almost like this little open mic of sorts with the funniest people in the country yeah. and then they you make them laugh and then they're like, oh, you should do stand-up. And so how many nationally headliner or nationally headlining comedians told you you should do stand-up before you started doing stand-up? Uh, it was probably like a dozen or so. Okay. It was like, it took like a year of working at the club Okay. before I finally was like, okay, I got to do it. And then like... Uh, I would tell stories to like other comics, like feature comics, you know? Okay. And they'd be like, that's hilarious. Can I use that? And I'd be like, and I had, and I had no idea like that whole process. I just was kind of like, sure. But then, you know, later I would hear it on the stage and it would work for him. So I'd be like, dang, that could be me. So I just got to keep these to myself and then get the courage to do it. Wow. One question. When did the beard come into play? How long has that been around? I think I've had it since 2008 or nine, something like that. Oh, wow. it's like come and gone. I've cut it off and then immediately grown it right back because I'm like, I don't like how I, I don't like how my chin looks or something, you know, <laughs> I don't know what it looks like. I haven't seen it in probably a good six or seven years. So I'm not, I'm not sure what it looks like under it? there. The, the, chin, I, the chin's underrated anyway. Yeah. So, and then I feel like if I shaved it now, it would just be this weird paleness, you know, <laughs> it would look like seven year old skin because it just hasn't seen sun in so right. long. Yeah. It'd be like ba- just a baby skin, you know? It's really funny. My wife's grandpa, he's had his mustache for 80 years, ever since he could grow a mustache. Nice. Yeah. He ended up, they ended up nicking it because they were shaving and they cut it too short. So they ended up shaving it off. And it really was like fresh skin. Yeah. Where <laughs> Preserving it. You know? yeah, yeah, exactly. It's I'm like saving a it. horse saddle of leather on the rest of the face. And then it's just fresh skin on the yeah, mustache yeah. part. Yeah. So. 70 up here, you know, and then. <laughs> From the mouth and below is just, you know, six years old. It's not, I don't know. It's beautiful. And you know what? You you and I together, I think we could form like cousin it. Because you've got, for all the audio listeners, it drapes down so elegantly. It's like, it's almost smooth and and, and uh, straight. Thank you. It's thank like you. the straightest beard um, I've seen in a long time. Yeah. I mean, I'm a 2,000 year old wizard. So you know, <laughs> <laughs> you've learned to grow a good beard in that time. Oh. You know? That's very true. Yeah. That, that's how you handled the greeters or how people did the work. Yeah, I'd yeah. Say. I, uh, I started telling people that like a year ago that I was a 2,000-year-old wizard. You, I can so, see it, man. And it's funny. Like nobody really questions that. They're just like, all right. You know, if, so it either means that I'm that crazy or they're just like they're <laughs> sold. If you wore a robe, I wouldn't be shocked. <laughs> if you came here in a robe and been like, let me pass. I'd be like, come on in. Let's do this show. Let's make some magic. 
Yeah, so. I mean, normally I wear a flannel and I just embrace the inner lumberjack in me. You know? Oh, so. I can see that too. So yeah. di- there are so many different looks. Well, maybe there are a few, but they're strong with the beard. Yeah. Really yeah. Oh, no, it's stuff. a confidence builder, man, for sure. Like if I get in a hardware store, man, buddy, I got opinions, you know. Oh, <laughs> man, I like that. I like that. Did you... Can you back it up with your knowledge? Yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty handy. So, okay. Yeah. Like I grew up uh, with my dad was in construction a lot. And, uh, you know, okay. it's like you just grow up around it. So. It was, Got it. Plus, like, a, I don't know. I just like like a challenge. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Because if I grew the beard like yours, people would be like, you're definitely from Brooklyn, aren't you? You homebrew kombucha. <laughs> like, yes, I do. Yes, You're I do. Like, yeah, you like it's a phenomenal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's completely effervescent. Okay. So, uh, but back to you. I also wanted to ask, uh, when, so you got into comedy after around a dozen headliners told you you were funny and yeah. then features were taking your stories. Yeah. And so what was it like going on stage? Did you start? Oh, I bombed. Improv? No, no. I, I did a, I did like anybody else. I like go do open mics and I yeah. bombed like my first open mic, uh, my second open mic I bombed as well. And like both those times I was like, man, I don't know if this is for me, you know, I was like oh, yeah. getting that like uh unconfident about it in like every way uh wow. luckily like uh, like a good friend uh savannah hernandez she was like no no keep doing it you're funny like definitely keep doing it yeah. and uh it was like just enough to push me to keep doing it and like the third set substantially went better and then i was like okay now now i'm not you know now i'm full into it god so, so you just like a wizard you leapt and bound <laughs> on your quest and then you failed and then uh, one of your Hobbit friends said, "Keep going." Exactly. And then, <laughs> I would never call her that. Not, not to, yes, not to not. her face. Metaphorically but, speaking, yeah. of course, Savannah loves yeah. Savannah. Um, but th- then you became uh, Umphris the White, and then yeah. you decided to go on your quest. And I don't know if you're allowed player. to say the White anymore. I, I mean, uh, you know, I'm not going to give myself that title. I feel it would go <laughs> super pigeonhole me. You know. <laughs> We just came off of, you know, four years of, you yeah. know, some stuff. So maybe yeah. <laughs> I'm going to leave that out. You know? We're going to have to. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll leave the color out of it. We'll do. Uh, I don't know. We'll figure it out. But magical, beautiful. Was also going to ask. We were talking a little bit before the show. And you've also had some surprises, some additional surprises on your comedy journey. One of which was going on stage when the feature, the opener was yeah, that's in traffic. Right. Yeah, at Kill Tony. Yeah, like another local comic, super funny guy. Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to mention his name because I don't want it to make him look bad, you know. But it's not. It was like one of those things. I mean, that it's happened, his fault, really. It's, you know, uh, not good. You, you know, I, but, I don't know uh, who it is, but you're a shitty person. No, I'm no. kidding. You're a great person. <laughs> He's awesome. Super funny local guy. I like him a lot too. So I felt really bad, but also it's one of those things, you know, like always be ready. Those opportunities, you know. So. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, so like he got stuck in traffic and it's, you know, we're like five minutes away from showtime supposed to start. And I kind of like getting this sense, like who's going to open the show. And um, it's like me and the other greeter who is also a comedian, John Fletcher, you know, oh, love so, Fletch. Yeah. Fletch, great guy, you know? So, you know, I'm kind of sitting there like, you know, who's it, is it going to be me or John? You know, like there's, these are the two comics you have to work with here to open up. But then Casey comes over and goes, get ready to, to open up the show. So I'm like, shoot, you know, okay. So now I'm like trying to switch the mind over comedy, you know, like get Dang. ready. And then he, br- you know, brought me into the green room and, you know, Tony Hinchcliffe's like, you, know, you ready for the big leagues? And I'm like, oh, I'm like, absolutely. Yeah, way way to go. give a pep talk. Yeah, yeah. You know? And then he's like, you know, you're going to bring Allie up and then Allie will bring Allie Makovsky and then, mm. you know, you'll, she'll bring me up. So, you know, but you'll be opening up the show. So I was like, cool. That's awesome. Like I'm super excited. So I'm like, I'm just going to go run and get my shirt real quick. And then somewhere there was some miscommunication between like Casey and the sound guy or something like that. But wait a second. Were you shirtless when this was happening? Well, no, I mean, I had my like, uh, no, no, no. (laughs) Yeah. Just wandering around shirtless. Uh, It's it's a total new look there, I guess. Uh, That was the lumberjack on wild. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, no, but like the uniform there is like all black. Uh, and oh, I don't know why I just thought that I should have a different shirt on when, in, you know, in reality, I should have just went up in all black. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> like blue man group. Yeah. Just, uh, well, we stay like, away from the white and yeah, yeah you know, it's... colors, stay away from colors, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, uh, so somewhere there was some miscommunication where I was like, I'm going to go get my shirt real quick from my car. And then, you know, and as soon <laughs> as I think left, gonna leave? no, like as soon as oh. I left, the sound guy dropped the opening video and it's only like three minutes. 
And I'm like, my car is at the end of the parking lot. So I'm like, now I take off running to the end of the parking lot and I grab my shirt and I'm running back, putting it on, buttoning it up. And I'm at the bottom of the stairs to the, like to the outside of the Tempe improv. Yeah. And I'm hearing the sound guy say, now coming to the stage, your host, Carl Umfress. And I'm like, I'm not even in the building yet. I'm about to, this amazing opportunity is just about to go terrible. So I just like nonstop, just keep running up the stairs all the way into the showroom. He re-announced me and I just hit the stage super winded. Oh my, like a baseball player sliding into the plate. Yeah. And I, you know, you just kind of have to address it. Like, you know, did you guys see me run in here? Like, I'm not supposed to run. I might (laughs) die up here. So. And how did it go? I, I feel like it went really well so you know for what it was i felt like my timing was still there and i didn't rush through what i knew they needed eight minutes Mm -hmm. i hit my eight minute mark which i thought you know i was definitely going to rush through because i was so winded trying to catch breath but right it just ended up working out (laughs) maybe the panting in between punchlines helped you yeah yeah and then me kept saying or like how i kept saying i was so winded you know repeating that or something (laughs) maybe bought me some time (laughs) you know the scramble sprinkled throughout the set yeah that's yeah. great so yeah that's how my like 2020 started because that was february of last year just before everything happened so it's like i was like oh this is this is how we're going to start the year this is going to be an incredible year oh shit and then <laughs> you jinxed it oh yeah damn. and then a month later you know <laughs> yeah. i'm like nope oh god man well yeah and how how has it been since then in these pandemic times, all this pandemonium. Well, I mean, being able to go, I mean, Arizona has been pretty open, it seems yeah. like, but still, it's not fully open. And that means probably less comics. So, yeah, or at for least sure. Less spots, I would say. Well, yeah, way less, like, you know, book spots at the bigger clubs like the improv or stand up live and stuff like yeah. that. House of Comedy, they stayed open pretty much nonstop at limited capacity. Yeah. I thought that was really awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was able to get on a couple of shows, um, you know, kind of sprinkled throughout last year that kind of helped. And, uh, you know, and then of course at the beginning of this year, getting on Sydney Smith show was also a big help too. So that's yeah. awesome. And, and we were talking a little bit about it before the show too, but like Sydney Smith, he really, he it's builds a class good act. teams. Yeah, he is. A, that's what he is. A class act. Yeah. Yes. I call him the creme de la creme, but yeah. I think I should stop calling him that. Maybe the class act is the better uh, way. To yeah. Go. I told him though, that I read his texts, like they're in all caps, you know, for whatever reason, cause it just feels like anything he message he sends has like that tone of seriousness. Yeah. So, but, uh, Sydney's an awesome dude. I, I love Sydney. Great guy. I appreciate him. Yeah. And what he does for the scene. Oh, that's awesome, man. Well, good. I wanted to, before we're going to get into the advice, because this is a comedy advice podcast, so we give some advice, give some self-help so that we can help you self-help yourself. Well, and before we get into that, I've got, well, first off, let me just say thank you. This has been the first or second time that I've had somebody in the studio, which I don't even know what to call this place yet. Maybe I should make it something whimsical, like a, uh, hmm. um, like a forest or I sh- the audio forest. Yeah, I'm a big fan of trees and forestry, so. Uh, yes, I, I thought with Lumberjack vibe, we could try and add some masculinity to my much-needed self and Yeah, yeah, space. just to, like get a stump in here, you know? like And that would be your coffee table or something. Just a nice stump. Oh, just shit. a chunk of wood. You know? I love that. A you nice could tell stump. people you cut that down and, you know, drug it in yourself. You know? Maybe I could just print wood. Uh, on, on my printer and then wrap it around this that yeah it'd be, be yeah and even if it's those sheets too where it's just like <laughs> taped all around you know i just, made this i cut this down yeah this is diy right here <laughs> this is uh some premium timber some premium lumber um well we're gonna get into self-help got some good stuff here we'd like to start off and by we i mean i like to start off with an inspirational quote so that it can help jazz us for i'm getting i don't know why i'm slowing down with my words here Take a deep breath. I don't know. It's just the lumber and the wood, it just made me feel more peaceful. And the yeah. beard. I feel like it's almost hypnosis. It's really a good beard. Thank ten you. Ten out Thank of ten. You. Thank you. Thank there you. Was a Take a lot of pride beard. in it. Uh, I comb it, you know, I brush it 500 times a day. That's oh, how you get the straightness, you know. It's just, a, you know, it's constant grooming. Do you have like a beard gel or something? Like no. A beard bomb? No, that's the like least manly thing is that uh, I get asked all the time, like, do you use beard oil or anything like that? And I have to say no. And then they always ask why. And the reason is I have very sensitive skin. 
So, me too, bro. You know, I, well, you, you would like, know that about me. But you look, you're like, oh, he looks pretty manly. The last right. thing he's going to say is that he has sensitive skin. You right. Know, so they would expect that from me, but yeah. from a, a wizard like you, a lumberjack. Yeah. This yeah. is, yeah. Well, I mean, sensitive skin is tough. And, uh, you know, you can't really, I get burned so easily. I, I do not belong in Arizona. Yeah. I I'm belong a native. in a castle somewhere in like Scotland. I'm a native. A turkey leg. Yeah. Sorry. I'm a native and I got, I've gotten second degree sunburn here as a kid oh yeah. my god yeah. wear your sunscreen kids dude seriously the sun is not it's, it's like you don't get sun kissed here you get sun molested yeah it's just relentless yeah it's a scorch it's like Hun harvey wine sun over here <laughs> all right well so, inspirational quote i like to ask my guests if they have any inspirational quotes that help get them through their dark days or help motivate them so carl hmm. do you have any inspirational quotes Oh, nothing that I, I'll probably butcher some of them. I think the one I look to the most for comedy was uh, like from Bob Newhart about giving comedy a go, like knowing that you had to take that chance to see if it would work to have that piece later in life. Something along those lines. I probably should have looked it up. <laughs> well, you probably should have, but yeah. you know, we, we planned so this sorry. for a month. So no, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. no, that's fine. Uh, by the way, I was thinking of your name, Carl. I love that name. Thanks. I thanks. feel like that's, and I love seeing somebody that doesn't look like they're uh, middle management in a sitcom <laughs> or, it's, or a grandpa, I guess. Cause I feel like you're the youngest Carl I've ever met. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, I say that everybody named Carl's probably a pretty good dude uh, for the most part. That's maybe I'm a little biased. At least if you spell it with a C, you're definitely a good person. So, oh, if you spell it with a K, bro. If you spell it with a K, I, probably questionable. Yeah. You know, if you spell it with a Q, little oh, bro. Get, check yourself. I have never come across that, but that's probably what I'll name my kid now. <laughs> Carl, Carl with, a, with Q. a Q. Just uh, and then I'll, it'll be you know Carl with a Q, but Junior, and then it'll really throw him off. Oh my God! So. Wow, that would be well. You know what? I'll race you to it. Whoever has the boy first. Yeah. Oh, who knows? A girl. You could do a Q Carl feminine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? Yeah, yeah. Gender is that a thing? I don't know. No, exactly. I have no idea anymore. Absolutely not. Q is gender fluid. I feel. So. I feel yeah, absolutely. You do it with a Q. It's fine. Maybe I do that and I'll just get more bookings. I don't know. Oh, there you go. Carl with a Q. It's definitely like you could have a shtick around it. Carl yeah. with a Q. It'd be a weird one. But it's yeah, almost I like, like it. quarrel. Yeah, you want it. Yeah, you'd want to say that, but then you correct him like, no, no, no. <laughs> it's Carl. Yeah. Yes. Excuse me. It's 2021. Okay. It's yeah. it's Carl. Don't assume it's quarrel. It's, it's not quarrel. <laughs> it's not how the fucking protagonist from The Walking Dead pronounces it. Carl. <laughs> it's Carl all right well beautiful well actually that wasn't a great quote but yeah, you know i butchered what? it it's it's passive I don't think, so. you are a lumberjack so you do butchered well yeah you chop hack things i chop things down yeah, that's right yes so <laughs> chop great, it up. great transition so we've got a quote right here it's by a robot and the robot's name is inspire robot what its main purpose is is to take the wisest words known to man or woman and use ai to integrate them for an inspirational quote Makes sounds sense. very 2021 it is, yes. It was invented by a guy named Carl with a Q. Yeah. So, oh, shoot. Yes. All right. So, Inspirebot, Carl, please let me know how you feel about this quote. Inspirebot this week says, <clears throat> time travel is not for you unless you act compassionate. Hmm. I like that. I like that a lot because um, I believe in time travel. So Obviously. I, I mean, mean, who why? doesn't? Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm 2,000 years old, so... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you are a time traveler. I, yes. Yeah, or more like just a person of time. I don't know. I don't oh, know what it would be. But yeah, I person traveled traveled time. through time or a person of time. I traveled in time. Yeah, I went inside I'm an, time. I'm an in time traveler. Yeah, okay. no condom, just bare, just, <laughs> just <bare-backed>. raw, <laughs> just, just, just raw, <laughs> just a raw in time traveler, just dipped in time. Mm. <laughs> yum yum. Well, love it. <laughs> love it. Love it. So as a time person, you yeah. appreciate time. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you act compassionately when yeah, you're traveling. Yeah, I definitely try to, for sure. You, I think you have to act compassionately just in general. Just, I mean, right. Right. Because uh, I, I don't know. I think you need to be somewhat aware that the other person, you know, like how you perceive that other person and how that person perceives you. Like, there's, you know, you can't just have those. I guess assumptions or whatever. So it's easier to act, you know, compassionately for somebody else than just 
to be negative, I guess. Yeah, that's very true. I feel like, and if you're traveling backwards in time, if you're going back trying to change things, you have to be compassionate for the consequences that are going to happen to other people. True, true, yeah. Like, I don't know, if I went back in time to uh, be nicer to my brother, I wouldn't be compassionate because my brother would be a little bitch today because he wouldn't have an older brother just guiding him through bullied words and calling him a little bitch. So I think... Is that what it is? Because I had an older brother and... uh, That was it. (laughs) That's what it was? (laughs) That was it. Yeah, he's the the reason I'm the man I am today. It's because of all his bullying. You would have been Carl with a Q with no beard. You probably would have had a little goatee or something. Uh, Or just the... What is it? The... The chin where it's just under your oh, lip the or soul whatever. Patch. The soul patch. That's it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No God. thanks. Yeah, exactly. People would have thought you were in a jazz band instead of a lumberjack or a yeah. wizard. Yeah, so no. we don't want that. So thank. what's your brother's name? Uh, Christopher. Oh, Christopher. That's my yeah. younger brother's name. Oh, wow. Oh, that's great. Man, I hope you beat the shit out of him. Oh, <laughs> all the time. All the time. Yeah. Now, I mean, uh, so my older brother was much smaller than me growing up because he had like severe asthma. And so I would just let him like abuse me and pick on me because i felt like i you know that i would just overpower him until we got to high school you know when we got to high school it was a change because i was like yeah you're not gonna bully me anymore oh shit know? and then yeah and then i became the bully no oh man <laughs> no i just stood up for myself for once and then everything changed the power shift you know damn yeah i was gonna say is he doing well now no he... no not doing well oh shit okay <laughs> well <laughs> <laughs> Didn't work out for him, but you're doing great. You're killing it, Carl. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so luckily, your your little brother never overcame you, and he, he might met, not be the Stefan you are today. Yeah, exactly. You, know? you see, I was it. I was in the position where I needed the power. So as I got it, I was like, "Wow, this power is really valuable." And if I show others that I have the power, then they will be respectful, and they'll learn to stand up for themselves. And my brother, he never stood up for himself, but he's doing great. <laughs> and when other people call him little Chrissy Poo, then he's like, you know what? I embrace that. It rolls right off now because, yeah, no, yeah. it doesn't phase him. Yes, exactly. Water off of his his little brother back. So, oh, yeah, yeah. compassion is key. That's what I think we, I really think we, sque- we wrung this one dry of motivation. For so sure. I feel motivated. <laughs> yeah, I'm motivated. All right, we're going to move on to the questions. This first question, it's found, it's on Reddit, found by our fan Evie. Thank you, Evie. It says, <clears throat> I scratched and dented my boyfriend's car. How to make it up to him? So this morning, leaving my apartment building, I was heading out of the underground. One thing led to another, and I rubbed the right back side of his car against a concrete pole. I already told him and he is bummed. He didn't get mad or anything, but you can tell he's upset and I feel like crap still. I'm not sure what to do. There's a lot more here, but I'm going to leave it at that. Help. Hmm. Ooh. So has your girlfriend, Carl, ever... Dist- do you like cars? Do you do you have uh, a name for your car? Are you close with your car? I mean, I like keeping... I like finding a deal on a car and making that car last for a long time. Like... Oh. Uh, you know, like one of the cars I drive is a 2000 Honda Civic, you know, so like didn't pay much for it. Love it. Gets me from point A to point B. Great gas mileage. But I mean, do I wish I had a Porsche? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, you know, yeah. I I, you know, I wish I had better cars, but I uh, I drive within my means, I guess. Um, but yeah. I would be broken hearted either way. That's know? yes. Because it's still still your car. What's do you have a name for your car? No, no, no. I've never been into naming, naming my cars. Because then when you gotta put them down, yeah, yeah, less. and then I have to have feelings for them. Or I don't know. Yeah, I, I, you know, I've never named a car, which is weird, I guess. I've I named my current 2007 Kia Spectra Betsy. Okay. And we actually yesterday or, or the day before we named our 2015 Hyundai Sonata Carl. Oh, nice. Yes, that um, car is gonna be with you for your. Probably your grandkids. It's oh. going to be around for a while. It's going to be sturdy. It's going to be a we, two thousand year old car. We actually got it new paint. It's actually all plaid now. Oh, nice. So, yeah. Get a denim interior. You know? Oh, that'd be perfect. And yeah, just something denim's going to hold up. Instead know? of spraying water to clean the windows, it's just syrup that splatters yeah. all over. Or you know, chill. brute cologne or something. Oh my god, beautiful. So it smell like your nice grandpa, real heavy. Musky <laughs> smell. Uh, you put, turn on the radio. It's stories about World War Two. It's just yo, heck yeah, perfect. <laughs> Or about time travel. I don't know. You turn it on and you go back 50 years. It's beautiful. Amazing. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, Carl, I, you know, if I was to get a car, 
that I really want. I want a Tesla, to be honest with you. I can see that. But I want the Cybertruck. Oh, dude. dude. Strongly. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I think it's because so many people hated on it that mm. I just would love driving it. You know, just I don't know what it is, but there's something about that. Uh, I want one. I think that would be like a huge middle finger to everybody. If you're just driving around in a cyber truck and people are like, well, look at this douchebag, but also <laughs> I want to be that douchebag. Yeah. And the I'm okay, I'll, I'll embrace it. Yeah, I feel like I would too. I would take a cyber truck in the wink of an eye. Yeah. I feel like I would take it. And I would give a badass name to it. I um, might actually name it if I had one. Yeah, dude. I would have to, I think. Trucky? Something. You know, <laughs> no, something. not Trucky. That sounds. I, it probably comes named from Tesla. You know, it's probably in the programming or something. And if you try to rename it, then it maybe you have a feud with it. So maybe you don't get to. Oh, man. Can you imagine every Tesla is like an Alexa or a Google? Or a Siri, yeah. but it comes named. Like you turn on the screen and Elon Musk is like, Hello and welcome to your new Tesla. It's named Chili or something like that. And then you're like, Hey Chili, can you please turn on? And he's like, All right. It comes to the voice too. <laughs> All right, let's do it. And yeah. <laughs> oh, that'd be amazing. I'm sure it I'm sure it's an option for Tesla. Just a small fee, an upgrade fee to get the the dialect of your choice you know? oh my god that would, or like actor of your choice even they could, they'd probably do that yeah. elon musk has enough connections uh, hello this is morgan freeman welcome yeah. to your truck cyber truck yep uh, I'm, I'm for it yeah 100 percent for it i feel yes i i would love that who would you who would be your celebrity that would be your voice in your car uh gilbert godfrey Hello and welcome to your Cybertruck. Okay, yeah, that would be great. I, I love Gilbert, and uh, you wouldn't even need a honk. It was just like honk, honk. Yeah, Jaffa. That's yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, I was a fan of him from like uh, Problem Child and like those like parts he had in like uh, '80s and '90s movies. Oh, okay, so, okay. Yeah, I met oh. him twice working at the Improv, and the, both times I was like a little nervous, and oh. it's just like seeing somebody that you've watched for so long. That's incredible. I feel like I would want to kill myself if he was in my car 24-7. But as a comedian, an actor, and um, brief stint on Hollywood Squares, amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. yeah him in the roast and stuff is just, uh, him with Jeff Ross is always a good pleasure. Yes, yes, yeah. an absolute pleasure. All right, well, how would you, well, I guess if your girlfriend wrecked your car or just scratched the side, how would you feel about it? I'd be bummed out, but at the same time, like I don't hold anything that, you know, that's, it's an item. That's why you don't name it. Everything's fixable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Because if I was like, oh, my wife scratched Betsy, that would hurt. But it was like scratched old Kia 2007. Like, fuck it. It's just a yeah. car. Yeah. It's just a car. That's why I'm on the fence about naming my kids too. Because, you know, if something <laughs> happens to them. It's like, well, wow, fuck now, it. Like, shoot. Yes. Now, I feel really connected to this kid. <laughs> I named him and everything. Give it to like kindergarten. Because up until then, they're just like blob of flesh. So. Yeah, you shouldn't name them too early anyways. Like, let the kid develop some character. And then you really, you pick the name that fits him. You know? Oh my God. I feel like that's so, there's yeah, a lot of wisdom in that. That's where you're really showing your rings. Of, thanks yeah your tree rings because you are <laughs> wise beyond your years well you are wise proportionate to the years you've lived because i Thank feel you. like that's really good thanks yeah yeah i if just you, came up with that no oh my god wow <laughs> or it's just just like magic if you were to choose a different name carl dude, what's your middle name bradley bradley okay yeah. wow if hold on i'm seeing you as a bradley now and i don't like you yeah carl, nobody does <laughs> love it love it yeah, I think at one point when everybody in like grade school was calling me Carl's Jr., I was like, I wanted to like go by my middle name. And then uh, yeah. I think when I said what my middle name was, people were like, no. <laughs> so <laughs> there's no change in it. Just stick with it. So no stage name. It's my real name. You know. Oh, I love that. Yeah. So. I I'm glad you decided to do that. CBU. It, your initials also sound like a community college. Yeah. It's I had a job once where they take your first initial and then the first like couple letters of your last name to create your company email. So it was like C U M F R E. <laughs> so it was Comfrey. 
at the company email and everybody had a great laugh about it. And when I was like, can you think we can change this? They're like, no, it's just how it is in the system. I was like, so we all admit it's not They're appropriate. Like, we can change it. Here's your new email. Come for cheap. Yeah. At- <laughs> come free. You know, oh, God. we took the S off for you. So now it's just come free. Oh, fuck. Dude. Well, that is unfortunate. Yeah. But, you know, what do you do? Yeah, exactly. You, you know, move well, on. You grow a beard. You just um, get this killer look. And yeah, you just continue on. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just narrating There's... your life at this point. So, any other advice for this person? Uh, I don't think we gave give, any. But... Yeah, well, give your boyfriend back rubs. I think that back rubs are like a like a forgotten thing, and like just how uh, you would instantly take his mind off of his car. That is very true. He'll just suddenly be relaxed, and chances are most, uh, no, no one's really handing out back rubs these days. That's true. You know, Google, before they were Google, they used to be called back rub. Oh, man. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. Because they give you, a, I, I think they should have kept back rub. Because Google, nobody really, oh, it's a number. Wow, because we have so many results. But like back rub, they are giving you little back rubs. Yeah. You're like, um, how old is Carl, really? And then back rub is like, oh, 2,000 years. And you're like, oh, it feels good. I got that little itch scratched. I feel one less not. Yeah. And one more do. So I, I don't know. But yeah, back rubs is great. So we're going to move on to the next segment. And this is positive spin. So yeah. what this segment is about is a lot of the times when bad things happen to us, we start to think of the negatives. And we're like, oh, no, I don't have my shirt and I have to go up in three minutes. Or, oh, no, I spilled coffee on myself. Or, oh, no, my girlfriend wrecked my car. So what this segment is supposed to do is help us think of the positives so we can start training our mind to do that. Hmm. Therefore, I will give you a scenario, Carl, Carl, and you'll think of some positives for it. So you actually, so you're at work and you work on a weed farm. Hmm. It's so cool that you can say like a weed farm. I just yeah. imagine a, like a dog running through and helping herding sheep and stuff and the cows are just grazing on the marijuana and uh there's no livestock there but <laughs> oh, there I mean should there should be. Like I imagine you know, how tender that meat would be. Yeah. I mean it would yeah, it would it, you know be something else for sure. Hmm. So delicious. Yeah. I mean uh I thought about that they should possibly get some llamas, you know, to like maybe, you know, bring the weed from, you know, like one harvest to the curing room, stuff like that. I thought that would be neat. And they quickly were like, no, llamas are a mess. <laughs> we looked get into the it. Llama hair on the weed. Uh so instantly llamas out. So I was like, okay, that's my last idea I'm pitching. Did you try alpaca? No. It's a good substitute. Yeah, I didn't even think about it's it. It's like the vegan llama. I just yeah, yeah, I just assumed, you know, if llama hair is not good, alpaca hair. That's but, true. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll run that by at the next meeting. I hear alpaca, they're like the short hair yeah. Ooh, version of Yeah, of just got to find a like a bald llama, a hairless llama. Offer to shave them. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good idea. Yeah. Yeah. A Siamese llama. And then I could put that on my resume, a llama shaver. A llama. Yes, a llama rama. This is <laughs> amazing. Mama Rama. Mama Rama Groomer. L- llama Groomer. Oh my god. Oh, I love this. Any pro- any profession with a llama is fucking awesome. Or just, just add llama to it. I'm a llama greeter. Yeah, oh, you greet llamas. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. Well, I digress. <laughs> so this is your work. And you accidentally I don't know how this happens because it's all it's, well, farm to table, I guess, because there's an edible and you think it's your lunch. You eat it. And you are high as an airplane, not a kite. I didn't want to go with that cliche. But you're even higher than a kite. You're like airplane, probably. Spaceship. Yeah. Very high. Higher than a wizard would go to travel through time. Okay. I've All been right. there. You're grasping. Okay, good. I've been there. This yeah. is good. So what are some positives to this? You've still got seven hours worth of work. This is 10 a.m. That seven hours is going to go by splendidly well for you. <laughs> It's probably going to be the best seven hours of work you've had. Uh, You're not going to remember much of it, you know, and you're probably not going to get a lot of actual work done, but um, you'll have had a great day nonetheless. That is very true. Do you think, okay, oh, that's pretty positive. Um, I mean, you're probably going to raid the vending machine and, uh, you know, have like a small sugar overdose at some point, but. That's true. A little nap at your break or lunch, and then you're, you know, back to being, uh, you know, living the best life. Oh, man. That sounds wonderful. 
All right. Well, I think I made that too fun. So yeah, that was my yeah on. yeah. Okay. All right. How about this one? Instead of we, it's cocaine. It's methamphetamines. Oh, you yeah. accidentally just uh, lots of meth. Uh, well, the positive side, you're gonna get a ton of work done. <laughs> Probably the most work you've ever done in your life. You know, that's the positive. Like they're never gonna see that type of work from you again, they're unless like, they give you that supplement. Yeah, there you go. They're like, well, the whole farm is done. There's, there's, yeah, you've they harvested usually say, everything now. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they say a work is never done at a farm, but this farm is all done. You've done everything. So yeah. then you just have to figure out what to do with the last six hours of your day. You know, there, there you go. Exactly. And <laughs> promotion. Bam. Okay. Well, beautiful. You passed that with flying colors. Thank you, Carl. I've got the last question. It's from Reddit, found by our fan Thomas. Thanks, Thomas. It says, <clears throat> Me and my friend like the same girl. There's this girl me and my friend know, and the thing is that he has known her for long, and I just know the name of the girl and what she does and stuff. Haven't really talked that much, but our interests are very similar, and I'm kind of into her, but I think my friend likes her too. He hasn't said it out loud, but we can tell by the way he acts around her. We two are very close, and it is kind of awkward to talk about it with him. What do I do? Uh, well, like, I don't know. I think in that situation, either of you has to be, one. somebody has to be forthcoming. Because, like, nothing's going to happen if you just keep it silent. But, yeah. So, you know, I guess. Uh, Talk. You, yeah, you got to ask. You got to ask the question. You know? Yeah. Otherwise, you're never going to know. It's that whole, you know, like I was, like the uh, Bob Newhart thing about, like, you know, you got to go for it to see where it's going to take you and if it's going to work or not. So if you don't go for it, you're never going to know. Oh, that's true. You could do like you did as well with the comedians, the headliners that were coming through and you told them a little joke. Yeah. And they're like, you should do stand up. And then maybe you should go to your friend and be like, she's really hot. I like her. I would do very nice things to her, like give her chocolates. And he'd be like, oh, you should be her girlfriend. Like you, you start planning that in his mind and your mind. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, I get it. He's very interested. Yeah. I mean, and then manifesting. Yeah, try to manifest it, or but ultimately it's up to it's her choice, right? That's the thing. That's what I hear. Yes, yeah, it's, it's the thing. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Consent. Yeah, that's right. It doesn't matter. But I mean, you got to ask first, so that's true. You might not hit that finish line, but you want to be at the starting yeah. line. Therefore, I feel like what you want to do, like you said, talk about it, and and you know what? What happens, Carl? If you talk about it, and and your friends like, bro, Bradley, I am into her as well. And so you've got a Carl and a Brad, and they're both into Shauna. Yeah. Uh, Bradley probably has no chance, but Carl's going to get it. You know, that's true. Carl yeah. is, yeah, he's going to do just fine. But Bradley, mm, no. Bradley's going to have a date. He's with not going to say anything, and he's going to be lonely. That's very true for the rest of his life because he's a little piece of shit. Yeah. No, but uh, <laughs> <clears throat> what? Uh, sorry, I have a little deep hatred for Bradley, my older brother. But um, yeah, I mean, I think talking it out, and then if you guys do both like her. I think there needs to be some more talking. This this whole conversation thing needs to be entertained more. That or uh, you both just go, hey, this is how we both feel about you. And threesome. <laughs> is that what you're saying? No, I wasn't going to go that <laughs> angle. I was going to be like, you you pick as the, you know. I was taking the come at her from different angles. Yeah. Very yeah. literally. Okay. Got it. Gotcha, so, yeah. so if we both like you, choose yeah. A- We'll flip a coin. Me, B, or flip a coin with three sides for me, him, or no one. <laughs> Roll a die, maybe. Yeah. Threesome, you know? I don't know. You can have that on there as an option. I don't oh, know. There maybe you, you just leave all the options out there. Be like, like, hey, this is what we're all into. <laughs> How do you feel? Here's the menu. Yeah. What would you like? It's a la carte, so you can choose whatever you'd like. And um, there will be a tip, but or maybe two, depending on your preference. But yeah. Beautiful. Nice. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, uh, anything else? No, no. I don't I don't have anything. This has been awesome, man. Thank you. I can't I can't say thanks enough. This has been a lot of fun. This has been a pledge, man. I feel the only reason I feel bad, I feel like I um I'm wearing shorts and I don't have flattering legs. I'm sorry for all of you guys that are listening and are watching. Well, now listening because I explained it. So now you're imagining me in shorts, which is not even worse. Uh, I'm a total brat I have Bradley legs, I would qualify them as, but um, other than that, dude, it was a pleasure to have you, an actual wizard, on the podcast. Well, I appreciate it, man. I didn't even hardly notice that your knees were exposed this whole time until just now. So. Oh, yes. my I, What is the elbow skin is called the weenus? I think this is like the neenus right here. I think it's, it's, all, it, it's seems like it's all the same, right? 
it's the, it's all one weenus skin in your elbow skin oh yeah it's all testicle skin at the same time it's right? it's like the testicle skin that grew and stretched out for the rest of your skin but then it stayed shrinky and, and <laughs> wrinkled at the knee and <laughs> the weirdest part of anatomy <laughs> where imagine? where we get <laughs> skin <laughs> A boy just grows it outside of his nutsack. Yeah, it makes no sense. But, oh you know. God! I mean, yeah. But anyway, yeah. anyway, what? Where could people find you? What have you got to plug? What have you got going on? Um, for most of my, uh, I pretty much keep everything up to date on my Instagram, which is uh, you know at Pinchy Carlito, <laughs> uh, and that's from growing up in Phoenix, and uh, that's what your friends' parents call you. And you <laughs> You think it's a term of endearment until you learn a little Spanish and you're like, well, maybe that wasn't a term oh of endearment. My God. But it makes a great Instagram handle. So at Pinchy Carlito is where I keep most of my like uh, upcoming dates and stuff like that is on there or Carl Umfris on um, Facebook. Nice. Beautiful. What does Umfris mean? Is that German? I have. They have no idea where it comes from. So wait, who's they? It's like the, the wizard council. Yeah. Or yeah. Well, uh, like the Umfris name. Yeah. Like, I had like a great aunt that looked into it, I guess, like in the eighties or something like that. And it only goes back so far. Um, okay. And I'm going to guess that it's probably like, like anytime there was like mass immigration to the U S that, Oh, they, they changed their name. Yeah. Up. Wording could have got changed up or something, you know? So like commonly people will want to say hum Humphreys a lot, you know? Okay. They'll throw an H at the front of it or they'll put a PH in the middle of it. Um, I wonder what it would have been stranger than Umphris. Yeah. Because it's, I mean, it's actually, I feel like I, on my first try, pronounced it right. I didn't get hung up on it. So maybe they did a good job over at Ellis Island. I mean, it gets butchered quite a bit, but really? I mean, that's just fun. You know, Umphreeze, uh, Umphresh. Uh, and then people will blatantly just go, Humphreeze. Like, they, oh. I'm going to put the H there. Just a, just a bunch of fucking Bradleys. That's what they are. Another, yeah, that's what it is. Some fucking Bradleys. <laughs> God. All right, man. Well, it was a pleasure to have you on the pod. Thank you, thank so, you much. so much. And thank you, audience. Hey, good to have you here. You guys have been good listeners, good watchers. Thank you so much. We'll talk at you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you.